We will hear this story many times yet, but TBS's attempt may prove the definitive account of, as its title says, Strongest Man Under the Sun, Hakuho's Final 15 Days. Whereas NHK's documentary sought to intellectualize his plight, this is the populist take. Weary and crippled champion, dragging himself back for one last hurrah, or as he says, to leave that ring alive, not dead. There are lots of clips we have not seen, starting with Hakuho's trip to his old Miyagi no Stable building just prior to his final fights last year. There in his old room does he show us sumo school notebooks from 2001, filled with dogged attempts to write out his new ring name, and containing THE picture, a rendition of a muscular yokozuna with that very name, Hakuho, stitched into his apron. Crazy I drew that, he says in low foghorn voice, because, wow, I really became one. Yes, there are snaps and clips of the scrawny teenager nicknamed Bean Sprout by his peers, thrown around with ease and smashed into training room pillars. And then we have the transformation, the doubled body weight and insanely bending knee hovering just above the dohyo dirt that flummoxed Miyabiyama in 2006 and gave birth to Hakuho's erstwhile straight line style. We then review his phase of copying Futabayama and his Go no Sen method, receiving in the charge, adapting to a foe, and moulding a preferred stance around him. Afterwards comes the reminder he was below average weight for his entire top flight career, and that Go no Sen asked too much of his knees and back. And that's when my mentality changed to Sen no Sen, says the legend, as he justifies the slaps and smashes designed to strike before a foe could even think. Thus, after clips of thorough practice sessions and playful Mongolian sumo bouts on grass, comes Nagoya. Some parts are straight from the NHK version. The vow of a red kimono-clad man to make the imminent knee operation his last as an active wrestler. We also have shots of said operation. Followed by a recovery. Begun in hospital rehab, then on hospital roof as he dons his training sash for the first time post-op and stamps his feet for birds to hear. June the 8th sees him back in the stable with large knee supporters, resuming proper training with all repetitions counted out by junior wrestlers, fully bound to the cult. One minute he's pedalling, the next it's barbells, then heavy dumbbells, triumphant violin music overlaid, like Rocky without the steps and chicken chasing. Punctuating throughout are the faces of trainer Tomonari Oba and ex stablemate come sub trainer Sha Sensei. June 28th sees Hakuho board the Nagoya bound bullet train for the start of another strict routine early nights to maximize sleep, then 9 am starts, signaled precisely by Oba's drag back of curtains to let in rays of sun which the two men then lap up outside. My late father told me to draw power from the sun, Hakuho explains. What ensues helps me make great sense of all I filmed down there. On July the 4th, while I was standing outside, he was inside purifying his limbs with local water and incense and strapping to himself a lucky pebble to get him through those 15 days. Sure, he looked weakened in practice, losing even to fourth-tier colleague Chuda, but faced match one with a surge of spiritual power, pleasingly testing his right knee led charge and beating Meisei with a face that screamed, I CAN LAST THE 15! 
And Right Knee First was not totally new, TBS stresses, with the aid of clips from 2010 showing exactly how that style of charge underpinned his original version of Go no Sen. We see Dr. Kazutaka Sugimoto and his milky massage oil, along with Oba and Sha, constantly preparing him for duty. The former even frantically extracting blood from his left little toe after this win on day three. The subsequent painkilling shots triggering Hakuho screams, almost like a child. We have a new perspective on day four. Seemingly an honouring of genius, but actually a sign of the end. For that was about as far as my knee could be pushed, Hakuho informs. And my mind to retire was kind of made up. And that being July 7th, the Tanabata day on which you write out a wish, did Hakuho pen his enduring desire to last the full 15. To bow out a survivor not a victim. He seems bitter on the night of day seven after Tobizaru's dance, lamenting how these youngsters so underestimate me. But even that insult was converted to advantage. For seven days later does Hakuho awake to tell a massaging Oba of his Eureka moment. That if I hang back like Tobizaru, I can stop Shodai's left from cutting in. We see him actually practicing this insanely delayed charge on the Camp Dohyo, the only thing on his mind. For by then, as we've learned from actual video footage, he has plumped to retire, chokingly informing his entire entourage at dinner on day 10. So on day 14 he beats Shodai as planned, and while getting his massage the next morning, a dragonfly, sneaking through a camp window, flutters across his eyes. As it only flies forward and never back, Sumo has nicknamed it the winning insect and a highly lucky omen. We see the champ's thumb raised as his taxi departs, Oba turning to the camera to say, job done. And we see Hakuho explain his kiss of the dohyo. For you have to show thanks for all it's bestowed, said Deputy Trainer Shah. It was the first time in my whole career I'd felt that nervous, Hakuho confessed. But you all know the result. Etched into history as firmly as the man's final stamp of his stable's July bout sheet that night. 15 wins, no losses, 45 titles. The only thing missing even counting the Renaissance man medley at the end, is the final bout commentary, not least the words in the 36-year-old's exact moment of ultimate triumph. And after all, he was strong enough. I could make 10,000 more sumo videos, and likely will. As TBS tells us loud and clear, we will never see the like of this again.